Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Do Re Mi. This is the finale. Let's head it off with some exposition about what we're about to do with the ginger professor. Ah, Milton, you've come. It's good for you. I have the harp, but I can't find any stars. Well, you're looking at one. Jeez. Talk about uh, ignorant. He's a place little tune, though. It's the final instrument that we need to uh, bring about the battle with famous anus. It's coming up. There you go. Melon says it's the harp. What can it do? Well, funny you should ask. Gawa. Gawa. What kind of name is that? You needed to lock anus away. After you defeat anus, the harp will seal him. Okay. Seal him with a kiss from a rose. Beware. He has two forms. He needs extra copies. And don't let your guard down. I'll defeat anus and save Alice. Okay. Well, no better way than to tuck a harp into your pants. Is that a harp in your pants or are you happy to see me? So here we go. Here's the final battle with anus. This is a weird um, first form. I don't know exactly what they're going for here. Kind of looks like a frog, I guess, in a weird way. He poots, if you're into that. I have a little bit of, I, sorry, I had, I spent some time grinding to get some more lives, but I realize I'm probably just gonna do this in one shot, so that's kind of pointless, but you're definitely gonna wanna have double pants here, and I went back through one of the earlier levels, and I found the bubble extender, so that's definitely a huge boost to getting through this fight, and the next one, which is a little bit more difficult, and there it is, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple fight. You can probably beat it off in about a minute, finish pretty easily, pretty quick. Not everybody's into that, but you know. So there we go. So Frog Anus has become a uh, winged, horned angel, Dragon Ball Z character. You gotta watch out for uh, the jumping around of the frog form, but this one, this is a little bit more complicated. The reason why this boss fight is difficult isn't because of any of the attacks, it's just because Anus here has a ton of, um, of HP, a ton. So they've got a swooping attack here, They've got the swirling ball of death attack. This form, when it does this move, it doesn't hurt you. There's no hitbox on it, so you can't be hit by it. But then it turns into a character from Chrono Trigger and tries to fire its laser at you. You can just jump out of the way and then start bubble blasting as fast as you can. I'd recommend doing that. It's going to shoot a... Uh, more cheese balls at you. Just kind of figure eight, jump around that a little bit, and then when you get a chance, uh, fire your bubbles as much as you can. For those of you who are into feet, this is a perfect fight for you because you're really only going to be able to do damage to Ains' feet. That's kind of the big weak spot here. Eventually, when it starts to get a little bit low on health, it's going to fire two cheese balls at you. So you get two for the price of one. Pretty convenient. And ducking in the corner. Simple as that. So yeah, this fight in general isn't super difficult. It doesn't take too much um, practice to really get down the different attacks. Coming in with uh, double pants is obviously good. Taking three hits is obviously gonna make it easier on you, but overall not too bad. You'll, you'll know that you start getting closer when the two sunny side up eggs come at you and you can just hide away in the corner. The hardest attack to dodge, I think, is the portal attack where uh, they try to punch us in the butthole through interdimension trap. This one right here. This one's really tough, but that's it. They are done. How about that for a final battle? Viewers, first try. And uh, yeah, there you go. I finally defeated you, Eamon. And I found the instruments you took from the village. There we go. A little bit of uh, a little bit of a retort here from Milton. And we're gonna go and see if we can find Alice. This whole outro scroll is um, how do I say uh, weird? I'm not really sure what they were going for with this, but here's your post game. Alice, where are you? Come on, Alice. Oh, you're not Alice. The, uh... 
the resolution here is that Eamon was uh, just messing around, just wanted to have some fun. Your Honor, I was just trying to have some fun. So, there you go. Trying to play the fool. Oh, I was just joking. You know, one says, like, I'm not a racist, but, you know, um, it's all just about, you know, boys will be boys. We're just joking. Well, I don't know if Eamon's a boy, but we're just joking around. We're just having a good time, you know, just stealing people casually. Also, I don't know what this character is or if this is meant to, like, signify like a hook for another game. I'm pretty sure that there isn't another one. I think that this is the sequel and that's it. So, no more Don't Ray Me. No more, um... Melon's Castles or anything like that. But yeah, this just auto-scrolls. The game just finishes up with a little bit of, uh... You know, a little extra content for you. And here is our girlfriend. This game's version of the Sky Mommy. She's a giant pixie, apparently. Kind of like the Peach Mario juxtaposition a little bit. So there you go. We finally rescued her. She's not quite as detailed as... Morgan here, so I don't know. I would have done anything to get you back. Ah, oh, dude, you're you're starting to sound codependent. You don't want that. But he's right. Those monsters were no match for us. That is 100% correct. So yeah, let's get the heck out of here. Go back to the village, the the Piccolo Village. So clearly, this game is uh, the prequel to Dragon Ball Z, and play some music with our peeps. Why not? Nice little slow uh, screen scroll. <laughs> that must be the way home. I don't know how he figured that out. This honestly is uh, incredible. The level of deduction for uh, Myron here to be able to figure that out, it's beyond me. You know what would make this better? How about we uh, slowly show these sprites going off screen? There it is, just in case you wanted to see the entire thing if you couldn't figure it out. But. Viewers, one final part of the game that you have to do. Don't unplug your controllers yet. I'm falling. I'm falling for you, viewers. How can I stop? Can't stop. Won't stop. Alice, where are you? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure uh, how this happened, but yeah, you get to do a little bit of post game. You know, it's kind of like in Mario Galaxy when you can collect some star bits at the end and hop around on the different levels or whatever, except for not like that at all because this is pointless. So there you go. But maybe you want to hang out to the left side of the screen because we can fall into a tree. Now the question here becomes, is this a very small tree, like more of a shrub? Or is Milton actually a giant and he's been terrorizing this village for decades? Who knows? But there you go. She's a little bit more of our size now or is smaller i don't know if there's some force perspective going on like lord of the rings is she a hobbit are we one who knows but thankfully she's gonna get us out of this tree this is supposed to probably be some like end of the game comic relief but i think this is really dumb and uh yeah so enjoy this i'm not sure what they were exactly going for with this final cutscene, if you want to call it that. Just wiggling sprites, and uh, she's like, don't worry, I'll get you out. Just kidding. Bye. See ya. Have fun being stuck in that tree forever, you ding dong. And then we end the game on uh, the slowly rotated, scaled up sprite of Myron, and that's it. And then the best song in the game. So if you don't like this, you're wrong. It's like a smooth jazz version of the uh, of the theme song over these credits. So yeah, there we go. So now I get to wax poetic for a few minutes. Um, yeah, this game was a random choice. I was going on a hunt for more platformers, I forgot what the genre was called, more platformers when I was finishing up Aladdin and Mega Man X when I did the second round of these. I was just thinking of games that were fun for me. It's 
That's why I went with Kirby. Didn't really love Kirby 3. That game is... Which I played very poorly. I didn't explore as much. And I didn't really do the little side missions. I'm never going to really spend a ton of time 100%ing some of these games. I just don't have the time for it. Ain't nobody got time for that. So... I don't worry about it too much. Hopefully it doesn't offend too many of you. It's all just for fun anyway. Well, I just want to say thanks to Jun Chiki Chikuma for composing some incredible and also strange music. Something that maybe Yamamoto Love Dub here and now can understand. But yeah, this game was a random choice and I wanted to follow up. I came out with the decision to play the current three that I was doing, well, not currently, because Link to the Past hadn't been added in yet, but Kirby, Doremi, and Yoshi's Island. I think Yoshi's Island was actually the first of the three that I came up with, and I knew about Kirby 3 from the Nintendo Online subscription for Switch, which I do have, little flags, but that, and then uh, I needed a third, and I didn't know what to do, so I did some research and I was thinking to myself, like, I want to play another platformer, but maybe something that people haven't seen before. I don't know how people feel about this game. I don't know if it was a, a fun, popular watch for any of you, but I enjoy it. I think games like this, especially ones that don't make it stateside where I live, are very strange and it makes you wonder why they don't make it. I mean, I don't think that this game would have performed poorly. You know, it doesn't have guns and tons of violence or anything, but it's very cute, and very fun, and very silly. Has some pretty good music for the most part. I'd give it like a, a B minus in the music department. Some of it was pretty jazzy and funky and fun, and then some of it was just random bells and stuff that gives me nightmares to this day. So it really depends. But uh, yeah, special thanks to Shaka Kukin Game On, whatever that means. And uh, to the people who translated this in English, that way we could really understand the lore and the intense story of this game. Without it, I wouldn't have been able to do it. My Japanese is very rusty. I uh, roughly know 0% of it. So, konnichiwa and uh, ichni san shi. There it is. That's the end of the game. The end of the credits and the end of the series for me. I'm not sure if I'm going to backfill this with something else or if we'll just stick to more Link to the Past and Yoshi's Island until those wrap up, but that's all I've got for Do Re Mi, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this game. It's so goofy. Maybe give it a try yourself. You'll have to find it through the internet. So just Google it. You'll find it. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been Dean Mike. This has been Super Nintendo Sunday's Do Re Mi. Signing off for good for this series. I'll catch you next time with some more Super Nintendo Sundays. Bye.